Hey everyone, welcome to another edition of Power Core Productions and Podcastings. In today's video, we're going to be continuing Dragon Ball World's Strongest. What if Wonder Woman was in Dragon Ball Part 15? As always, if you're new to the channel or if you're a regular and like what we have to offer, then please don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, share, and hit that bell for post notifications so you can stay up to date on everything that is Power Core Productions and Podcastings that has to come out now and in the future now before we get into today's video i do want to make a little bit of a retcon before we continue on with the story that being in regards to wonder woman and her kaioken form now up until now i've been referring to it as kaioken times one million and i kind of had to rethink things because using the term one million would honestly probably shoot her into a tier of power that's like beyond anything in this current arc and i'm you know this is my first like dragon ball story and trying to figure out the things with power levels and power scaling it's definitely a lot easier said than done so i do apologize for that ahead of time moving forward we are going to be calling it kaioken 100 that's uh where i feel would be a good range so we're just going to refer to it as Kaioken 100 for now. But anyway, without further ado, let's get into today's video. So as always, sit back, relax, and enjoy the show. Diana would race to her home with Goku held over her arms and Gohan assisting. The disease was starting to take a hold and he was going to need to get his treatment as soon as possible. However, not too far behind, Yamcha would be closing in on them. Diana would be surprised to see Yamcha here, but he was coming along to help out. Also, Yamcha, being honest with himself and his limitations, knew that in the grand scheme of things, him being around wasn't going to change the results of the fight. So he figured the best thing he could do was support Goku any way that he could. His arrival couldn't have come at a better time, as Kami would speak telepathically to Diana, telling her that one of the androids, who was believed to be an Amazonian herself, was close to arriving to Themyscira, much to Diana's shock. For one, there were more androids than initially thought of, and that the androids they originally had been after were not the ones they were supposed to fight to begin with. All of this was coming as surprising news to her, but even more so the fact that Themyscira was now on the radar of the androids. None of this made any sense at all, but she knew that she had to be there, but at the same time her husband Goku was also in need. Yamcha promised to look after him, and he and Gohan would take Goku home, allowing for Diana to fly over the Themyscira to head off the android threat, while the other Z fighters remained at the rubbles of Dr. Jiro's hideout. As they stood, squaring off against the three remaining androids, 16, 17, and 18. Of course, Vegeta still being as prideful as always, decided that he would be the one to get first crack at the androids, and 18 decided she would oblige. Of course, this was under the condition that none of the others get involved in the fight. Vegeta was more than happy to agree to these terms, seeing as how he was going to be the one to claim victory, and he had no intentions on leaving anything else for the rest of them. The others had no choice but to abide by this. One-on-one -on -one fights with the androids. It was probably better off than everyone jumping in all at once. Perhaps they could win out in the war of attrition. 
The fight would go the same as in the original timeline, nothing really changing in the grand scheme of things. Vegeta would find himself on the receiving end of a devastating kick to the left arm, breaking it even while in a Super Saiyan state. Trunks would immediately charge in, going into Super Saiyan, and Chidai unfortunately would have to follow in after. Raix and Chi Chi, seeing their daughter from the future and worrying for her safety, would also come charging in next, and Tian Shinhan followed by Piccolo. Everyone except for Krillin would then begin their fight against the two androids, who were more than capable of holding their own against all of the Z fighters. However, rather than the massacre that was to be expected, their lives were spared. Android 16 only declaring that he had no intentions of fighting anyone except for Son Goku. And, deciding that they had nothing better to do, they decided they would go to the Son Goku home. However, they were going to take the scenic route. They wanted to drive, go shopping, do some other things. For 16, as long as they got there, it didn't really matter what method they took. Krillin would be the only one left standing, being terrified and slightly mesmerized by that of 18, who ended up giving him a peck on the cheek. However, Krillin would have to focus and tend to his friends, giving them all sensu beans, and thankfully having just enough to get them all back up to speed. In the meantime, Android 15 would eventually arrive to the island of Themyscira. The other Amazons had been warned ahead of time, the Queen Hippolyta having been given communication from Kami in the lookout. The Amazons stood ready for battle, although in the grand scheme of things, all of them collectively probably wouldn't have amounted to much against the now enhanced Amazon. However, as she descended on to the island itself, among the sanctuary and all the Amazonians that surrounded her, she looked around. Many of them were surprised because they knew who this girl was. Donna, Donna Troy, Queen Hippolyta would say, Android 15 turning back to the queen herself. Queen Hippolyta of the Amazonians, you are the top priority of my targets. What is the meaning of this, Donna? Why have you come here? And why do you seek war against your sisters? Sisters? I don't remember who any of you are. I only know one thing. That is to exterminate all Amazons and to annihilate the Mascara. You must come to your senses, Donna. This is not you. This is the work of that twisted scientist who has used his strange and manipulative arts to turn you against your people. There does not need to be bloodshed amongst the Amazons. Completely ignoring her, Amazonian warriors would try to fend and hold her off, only for Donna to easily push them all back as she made a beeline towards Queen Hippolyta. However, before she could strike, she would be stopped as Diana, the Wonder Woman, had arrived. Primary target, Wonder Woman. Hmm. I haven't been called that in a while. I must say you're pretty strong. Is this all your own natural training or is it the work of Dr. Jero? Android 15 would back away, getting into a defensive position as Diana would step forward. Everyone stay out of this. I'll deal with her. If you want to destroy the mascara, then you must go through me first. I have no problem with that. It's my primary objective. But we won't fight here. We'll go somewhere else. This is illogical. It makes no difference where we fight. Your death will be just the same. Then you have no problem giving in to this one request? 
Knowing that no one else would interfere, Android 15 would agree. The two flying off to an island no more than 50 miles away. It was big enough for the two of them to fight and was just far enough from Demascara. The Amazonians would stand on guard, some wanting to go and help Diana. However, Hippolyta would stop them. She knew that right now the only one capable of truly going toe to toe with Donna Troy was Diana and they had to leave things to her. As the two descended, both of them staring eye to eye, Diana would give Android 15 a warning. Please fight and come to your senses. I do not want to kill you. That's unfortunate. I want to kill you. Immediately, Android 15 would rush towards Diana. She held up her arms crossed defensively to block the punch before responding with an attack of her own. The two would begin a flurry of hand-to-hand -hand combat. Diana, being older and with the more experience, was definitely able to surprise her with a few strikes. However, Android 15 was resilient. The girl seemed to be moving almost 100 miles a minute, and even more so, she didn't seem to be tiring out. No signs of heavy breathing as the battle had just started. Every punch, every kick, Diana could feel the full bridal force that came behind it. The methods were cold and calculated. The strikes well coordinated, but also just a tinge of vitriol and hatred behind each and every strike. Diana had, would back away at the last moment, launching a few key blasts towards her, only for them to be swatted away as she would go diving in once again. The two colliding once more as Diana would back away to create space. However, Android 15 wouldn't give her the chance as she would lay in a series of strikes and punches before eventually lifting her into the air and knocking her back into the ground, creating a massive crater. As Diana slowly rose to her feet, Android 15 would descend, looking down upon the now backed and cornered Amazon. It's very pathetic. The doctor went on and on about your strength, stating that you were the strongest Amazon. But in my opinion, you're not even second best if this is all you have to offer. I figured you'd say that. If that's the case, then it seems I can't hold back against you anymore. I apologize. Truly, I don't want your apology. I don't care for it. The only thing that matters now is killing you. If that's truly how you feel, then I will show you what I am capable of. A red aura would then form around Diana as she yelled, Kaioken times 10. Immediately, the fight would continue with Diana now starting to push back ever so slightly. She was able to land a right hook straight to Android 15's face before responding with a heel kick to the gut and then a knee strike directly to the face, causing her to draw a little blood from her nose. Drawing some blood? You call this a victory? You call yourself an android and get you bleed so easily? I wonder. I will show you the difference between us, Diana. And I will show you why you are no match for me. The two Amazons would now continue on in their battle, Diana being pushed further and further. While she was very adept at using Kaioken, even more so than what King Kai could have even have imagined, eventually it would take its toll on her. And at this current level of power, it wasn't enough. She would push it. Kaioken times 50. At that point in time, as the two would now battle with Diana pushing at Kaioken times 50, the fight seemed to become more evenly matched at that point. 
they were able to stalemate for a bit. However, it didn't take long for Android 15 to gain the upper hand once again. It seemed like no matter what she did, there was no way. There was just no way of stopping her. Of course, that wasn't going to be the end of it all. As she would push once more, going for Kaioken times 100. Her absolute limit. Her hair turning into a fiery orange that stood up as if her hair had been set ablaze by the sun. So, this is the famed Kaioken 100. If this is the best you can do. However, before she could continue on her sentence, she would be given a series of strikes. She was mesmerized by the power and the speed. Diana knew that she could only maintain this form for a short while. And while in this form, she would have to give it her all. Eventually, though, once catching her off guard, Diana would use the lasso of truth, wrapping and binding it around Android 15. As she was held to the ground briefly just enough, Diana knew she had to be quick. She mustered all of her power into keeping the lasso wrapped around her. It was the best she could do. <clears throat> You're trying to restrain me with your lasso of truth. Is that it? You don't have the power to outright kill me. And now, you're in the worst case scenario. You have to use all your power just to keep this hold on me. <clears throat> if I break free, you know you're dead. That's why I will get you to see reason. Now, tell me who you are. <clears throat> I, I am Android 15 product and creation of Dr. Juro of the Red. That's not who you are. The lasso of truth commands you speak. Now, who are you? The lasso would begin to glow around Android 15. Her programming now being manipulated by the mystical power of the lasso. Two opposing entities fighting for control. The girl's mind felt like it was on fire, as if her own brain was melting within her own skull. There were two parts of her, two personalities, both struggling to break free. The programming of Dr. Jero, the inner person that was Donna Troy. Who would break free? Who would emerge? Who would come out? The fighting would continue until eventually there was no resistance. She knelt to the ground, her face, her hair covering it. As she slowly looked up, the tears welling in her eyes. Diana would look into them. <laughs> I'm, I am Tana Troy, Amazonian of the mascara. I knew you would return my sister. It hurt. It hurt so much. Diana would hear in excruciating detail everything that happened. It was a little over four years ago. A young Donna Troy had gone off, similar to Diana. She had gone from Themyscira to the world of man. There was believed that she would only be gone before a brief time. However, she had disappeared almost without a trace. You see, the good doctor had been keeping an eye out, hoping to get an Amazonian of his own. The girl was powerful and definitely hard to wrangle in. However, Night Android 19 was sufficient in the task. Once they had captured her, the experiments would begin. Being drugged and sedated, her body manipulated with beyond repair. The horrors. She remembered calling out for Diana, for calling out for anyone to help her. 
but no help ever came. To have that feeling of your body being toyed with, of something looking deep within yourself and leaving everlasting scars was not something that could easily be overlooked. However, thanks to Diana, she had managed to come back to her senses. Eventually, they would return to Themyscira. Donna now re-invited into the fold. Everyone relieved that the worst had not come upon them. However, many of the Amazons were now angry. They were angry at Dr. Jerome for what he had done. Anger towards humanity and for man in particular. There were many murmurings among the Amazons. This is why we should never trust them. We should never try to integrate into their world. Look what they've done to our sister, Donna. We cannot trust man. Man is evil. He is wicked. However, their worries would be quelled by the queen. While it was true, man was capable of great evil. There were also examples of man being capable of great good in the world and that all should not be judged for the actions of a few. However, this did leave them with a conundrum. Donna had been changed. What she used to be, she was no longer. However, while Diane was still worried for Goku, she did have an idea. In the meantime, the Z-Fires were still reeling from their battle against the androids. There was only one who had managed to hold his own. The only one who wasn't entirely tattered like the rest of them. That being the one known as Victor. Or Cyborg as Krillin had dubbed him. He was the only one who was able to hold his own against the androids for a significant amount of time. Fighting them to a draw before eventually they decided to retreat. But really more so, Victor knew that he couldn't take the both of them on alone. No, he might have been able to beat maybe 17 or 18 if he were by himself. But if he had to take on two or even all three, it wasn't going to work out for him. And the other Z fighters were being beaten down so badly left and right that he found himself playing defense just to keep them alive. However, there were many questions for him. Mainly who he was and just how on earth he had become what he did. Victor Stone would explain that he was originally a high school student at Orange High in West City. However, around four and a half years ago, he had been kidnapped, taken in by the mad doctor. You see, Victor was a star athlete at school and the doctor believed that someone of his prowess could make for a good test subject for the androids. Now, while he was definitely powerful in his own right, the main problem for Victor was that the technology used to turn him into a cyborg, technically, they weren't androids. Why the doctor felt the need to call them that, he had no idea. But in either case, the problem was that the technology used for him was more outdated than anything else. So, even though he was able to hold his own against the androids, ultimately, they had him outclassed, simply because any tech that went into them were newer modeling. You could say he was the, more of a prototype than anything else. He managed to escape the doctor's grasp, and the doctor didn't pursue him much further, believing that he was so insufficient and without his maintenance would just die off somewhere. Plus, he had all the data and research that he needed, so losing him was of no consequence at the time. So, you've been lying in wait, Trunks would say. Pretty much. I used what knowledge I had picked up, being stuck with the madman for so long. I collected spare parts, anything I could from wherever I could go, trying to build myself up. And that's how I made these. He would reveal his robotic arm that transformed into a cannon or a shotgun of sorts. I compressed my energy 
I make it as dense as I can. I call them energy bullets. Energy bullets, Piccolo would say. So why would you want to make something like that? So they couldn't absorb it. Those doctors had that absorption power in the palm of their hands. By condensing my energy so much, the mass would be too great. Basically, if they tried to absorb it, it would take them a lot longer. It would probably overload the system. Or, I guess if there's a better way of describing it, I made it so that it was nearly impossible to absorb it without it causing a great deal of damage to them. Plus, they're so dense and powerful, I could shoot them off. They're a lot smaller than a large energy blast that you guys create, so it's a lot harder to try to absorb them all at once. I was hoping that I could just shoot them off full and eventually take them out. But then you guys got involved, and I don't even know much about you. Only that the doctor went on and on about some guy called Son Goku. I looked him up in the data banks. Some martial artist that fought, one in the 24th Tenkaichi Budokai? Yeah. So I'm guessing that's who's the crew you guys roll with then. You say you're from the future. Am I in that timeline? You're not. If I'm being honest, a lot of things that happen here don't happen in the future. I can't make sense of any of it. There's no need to worry, Chidai with pat trunks on the back. It's gonna be all right. We'll find a way. But for now, elder brother, Radix would say, he's out of commission. Vegeta, having had enough, would simply fly off on his own, Trunks following. She that I wanted to follow, but Radix would stop her. This is a father-son thing. You should let them have their space. Oh, okay, Dad. But still, Chi-Chi would say, I can't believe that my little chi Dai has grown up so quickly. And your transformation... You turn into a, mm-hmm, Super Saiyan Cheetah. At least, that's what I call it. Cheetah would reveal that she had a cheetah tail also, much to Chi-Chi's delight. But I can also transform into something else. You can? Well, it only happens during a full moon. That's when I turn into a large cheetah woman for some reason. Ah, must be the Saiyan genes kicking in. Good to see that something's passed on to the next generation then. Piccolo would fly off as well, heading in the direction of the lookout, leaving the others. They now had to decide what they were going to do. The androids were going to go after Goku. Radix and Chi Chi would decide to head over to Goku's home. It was safe to say that if the androids had knowledge like they did, then they might be going there next, but it seemed like they were going to be taking their time with it. They could fly there a lot quickly and get Goku out of the clear if necessary. As for Victor, he was suggested to go to Capsule Corp and to speak with Bulma and with her father, Dr. Briefs. With all of his knowledge and know-how, then maybe they might be able to make something of him. Perhaps he could get some upgrades if needed and could definitely be of more use in fighting against the androids. In the meantime, Diana, along with Donna on Themyscira, had been speaking among themselves. And now, they had come up with a plan. At my current power, I wouldn't be able to make much against the androids. However... For better or for worse, you have been given a great power. But I never wanted this power. Not this way. How could I ever use something... Something that came from a source so evil? I understand how you feel, my sister. I know that you do not want to hurt or cause harm. And yes, you got this power under the most excruciating of circumstances. But this could be divine fate at work. You could turn the tide. 
you single-handedly have the power capable of vanquishing these androids. Don't let what the doctor has done to you turn you to the side of darkness. You can use it for the sake of good. In what better way to destroy what he's created than with his own work? Donna would come around to this sentiment. However, before they could plan even further, they would be given a telepathic message from Kami. Kami asking for Donna to come to the lookout. He had an idea in his mind. If things went the way he hoped, then perhaps they could have a plan to deal with the androids once and for all. In the meantime, Gohan and Yamcha, after getting Goku home, would give him the medicine and watch over him as he struggled and fought off against the virus. Many elements and many plays were at work, everyone going off to build themselves up for the next match with the android menace. However, unknown to all of them, there loomed an unknown player, one that was working in the shadows, lurking and waiting, waiting for an opportune time to make his next move. He had come from a place in time. For the creature, it was finally time to fulfill its objective. Its objective to achieve perfection. This concludes Dragon Ball World Strongest. What if Wonder Woman was in Dragon Ball Part 15? As always, if you enjoyed today's video and everything else that we have to offer, then please don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, share, and hit that bell for post notifications so you can stay up to date on everything that is Power Core Productions and Podcastings that has to come out now and in the future. Stay tuned for tomorrow's video as we continue Bleach Legacy, What If Superman Was in Bleach, Season 1, Part 3. But anyway, that's going to do it for the end of today's video. I'm J. Ron Harrington with Power Core Productions and Podcastings, signing off. And I'll see you next time.